Part 3 of Chapter 8 deals with general cell division, also known as mitosis. And what these next few diagrams show is how these cells actually go through this process. And this process includes, first of all, an organization of the chromosomes and the chromosome material, and then the actual process of cell division and how all of this works and how all this fits together. Now we already mentioned interphase, and interphase is the phase where all the genetic material must be made available so that cell division can actually occur. And We already mentioned that the, the uh, genetic material needs to be um, replicated so that we have two distinct pieces of genetic information, and this is of course what uh, needs to be accomplished before we can get to the M phase or mitosis in the cell cycle. And so mitosis itself is actually dividing the nuclear contents into two. And so that essentially means that we need to take each of the chromosomes and we need to separate the sister chromatids from each other. The second part is the actual physical division of the cell, of the cytoplasm, into two units, and that is called cytokinesis. So the M phase, this, this uh, phase of the cell cycle where the cell actually divides, has two components, mitosis and cytokinesis. Now when you look at the diagram here on the right, you can see that on top, you, you have the cell basically in an interface. You see there's a lot of chromatin, you don't see individual chromosomes, and you do just you see just a little bit of of these yellowish fibers. Those fibers are the, the, the beginning of these centrosomes as they start to issue little fibers that are going to help us with this process. So in here, all of this stuff, that's the chromatin, equivalent to what's happening in here. And all of it is contained by the nuclear membrane, so there is a, a solid structure around us. And all of this is now needing to be disassembled and changed so that mitosis can actually take place. So let's dive right in. Let's try and figure out how does this process actually have to work. Well, in order for anything to pull something else apart, we need the things that do the pulling. And in our cells, the things that do the pulling are called spindle fibers. These spindle fibers need to be produced, obviously, and that's what those yellow little structures called the centrom centrosomes were doing. Now once you have these spindle fibers produced, they then attach to the chromosomes at particular structures called kinetochores, and they then guide the chromosomes through the rest of the process. Now the spindle fibers are a little bit like you know, rustling cattle, if you think about it. You take your lasso and you throw it around the, the neck of the cow, well, and then you can pull the cow towards you. It's that kind of thing. So the spindle fibers are going to be targeted to chromosomes. They will attach themselves to the chromosomes and get ready to pull the chromosomes into place. First thing that happens is the chromosomes are moved to the center of the cell. It's called the equator or the midline of the cell. And these spindle fibers actually form something called a mitotic spindle. And in order to properly explain that, I'll actually have to show you uh, a diagram in the, in the next slide, but the mitotic spindle is one of the key features of mitosis. Once you have this mitotic spindle formed and all the chromosomes are lined up in the midline of the cell, then these spindle fibers start to pull and separate the the chromosomes separate the sister chromatids by moving them to the opposite ends of the dividing cell. Now this is a very dynamic process and in the homework assignments you'll see that we have a video that shows us and also the video in the lab show this kind of thing as well. So let's take a closer look at mitosis, the first part of it. And this first part consists of two parts. One of these is prophase. The two panels on the left are prophase, and then the one on the right is called metaphase. Now, in early prophase, one of the things you'll see in how this compares with the picture that we just saw a minute ago, you're starting to see that the, the chromosomes are actually starting 
to uh, congeal a little bit. They're starting to become uh, a visible entity. And over here, you can see now clearly that there's these two areas, these two centers. Well, those are the centrosomes, and these centrosomes are beginning to move apart. And as they move apart, they're, they're forming all these fibers in between. Now, at this point, you can see that the chromosome, each chromosome, consists of two sister chromatids. So there's one, two strands here, one, two strands there, and so on. And this whole process is just starting to get going. Now, in late prophase, and that's what this panel shows, you can clearly see two things. First of all, the chromosomes are not visible, and the nuclear membrane is gone. Here, you still have the nuclear membrane. It, it's sort of the, the, the packaging that holds the chromosomes in. Here, it's been dissolved. Not only that, you also see that these uh, centrosomes have arrived in opposite ends of the cell, and they're starting to attach themselves to the chromosomes, and then they'll begin to jockey them into position. The positioning happens here during metaphase, and this is where this really interesting thing called the mitotic spindle happens. There, there are your spindle fibers. This is a centrosome on either end, either end, and there's all the, the spindles. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever seen anybody using a spinning wheel, but one of the things you use there is you also have sort of a, a spindle forming, and the, the spindle kind of looks, you know, with, with, with wool around it or however people that initially described it saw it, but it reminded them of the spindle that's used in spinning wool. And so this is the name that, that stuck. But basically what happened, what happens is that the spindle fibers have jockeyed all these chromosomes into position and they are now in the midline of the cell. And of course they are lined up in the midline in this nice fashion so that when this spindle fiber starts to pull none of the chromosomes get hooked together and get in each other's way. So that's what happens in metaphase. In anaphase, which is the next phase, you'll see that the spindle is starting to be disrupted. So now you can actually see that there is a, a division here, a division that's forming because some of the chromosomes are traveling this way, some of them are traveling that way. Presumably, hopefully, they haven't gotten in each other's way to make this a, a really uh, nice and simple um, mechanism. And so here you can see they're, they're moving as these spindle fibers are lengthening, they are moving the chromosomes apart. Lastly, in telophase, telophase happens in conjunction with the actual cytokinesis division. So cytokinesis means that the cell actually divides into two. But you can see here there is a beginning division between the cell. There are still spindle fibers and various kinds of fibers that are making this process happen. Here they are in this image. And you have the chromosomes now at the top and at the bottom, so on opposite ends of the cell. And lo and behold, the nuclear membrane is starting to reform. And that signals the end of cell division and the end of mitosis. There are still a couple of other things to discuss about this. Not only do we need to move the chromosomes apart, we obviously also need to form the actual cell. And that's what happens during cytokinesis. Normally, this coincides with telophase, so the cell does two things. It finishes the movement of the chromosome even as the cytoplasm is split up and the new cells are made. There are some differences in this process between animal and plant cells, and this is the kind of thing that I, I want to show you. Now, before I start this, if you think about the differences between animal and plant cells, one of the key differences is that plant cells have a cell wall. A cell wall, which, of course, is not flexible. And so what you have to do in order to divide a plant cell is you have to build the cell wall before you can finish cytokinesis. Animal cells first. In animals, cytokinesis occurs by what's called cleavage. And in this process, you pinch the cell apart. 
How do you pinch a cell apart? Well, if you think of uh, something like um, uh, bread dough, sometimes the dough is pretty sticky. So rather than pinching it apart with your fingers, you actually use a string. You put the string around the middle of the dough, and then you just pull. And as you pull, the dough falls apart into two pieces. And the function of the string is here taken over by what's called a ring of microfilaments. Microfilaments are basically uh, the same kind of stuff that the um, spindle fibers are made of. It's a, it's a type of fiber. And in this case, they're used to divide the cell. Now, the cleavage furrow is basically the constriction area where these microfilaments work, and they keep contracting, and eventually they produce two daughter cells. Now, this, of course, is very different from what has to happen in plant cells, because plant cells do not act like bread dough. So what you have to do here is you're going to actually have to make some cell wall before you can be done with cell division. And you can see this under the microscope because these little vesicles that are bringing the cell wall materials to the center of the cells, they actually form something called a cell plate. So the cell plate is, is this part here, and even though the chromosomes have already arrived at the, at the respective ends, the cell wall is still being built. The cell plate still has to be finished. Now only right at the end, when finally all the pieces are together and the last pieces of the cell wall have been connected, then do you end up with two new finished daughter cells. Mm -hmm.